One of the biggest mistakes I see new photographers making is being too concerned on what is considered a good photo rather than storytelling in their sessions. I swear when everybody starts out with photography, all they care about is shooting with super long focal lengths, really tight frames, and getting so much bokeh that it doesn't even make any sense. You wanna be telling a story through your photos, showing context and what's happening. You're capturing moments, especially if you're a wedding photographer. Shooting tight and blowing out the back all the time doesn't even make sense. So let's talk about three places where I focus on that helps me with storytelling in my engagement sessions, as well as a real life BTS of me shooting to show you how it works. The first thing I like to do is shoot with prime lenses only. Y'all know I'm super biased towards prime lenses, but I really do feel like it makes you a part of what's happening. Now, aside of being a part of what you're taking photos of, the main thing I like about prime lenses is the fact that while you're learning photography, you really get to learn your lenses and exactly how they look. This way, in your mind, you know exactly what you're taking at all times. If I'm shooting with my 35 millimeter, I know exactly how it looks, I know how far I need to stand from the shot, and I know what I'm capturing in the frame. Rather than with a zoom where you're detached from everything and you're always basically guessing by zooming on what you want. Being a part of what's happening, seeing it with your eyes and translating that to the camera adds so much more to storytelling. Also, while you're shooting with your prime lenses, you can choose two different focal lengths at a time. So generally I shoot with two cameras and I'll have like a 35 mil on one and a 50 mil on the other. This way I know each of the cameras have a specific role. My 35 mil is capturing larger photos so I can see more of the context of what's happening along with my couple. And then my 50 mil is for any tight up shots of anything that's happening, close blown out backgrounds, or just like their hands to set some context. Second off, make sure you're having fun with your couples. There's nothing wrong with being a little silly during an engagement session, making your couples play games, and just all around joking around. You want your engagement sessions to be fun and this helps with storytelling as well. There's nothing worse than a couple who's just kind of sitting there looking at you like, what do we do with our hands? <laughs> so really have fun with your couples, tell them jokes, make them play games. If you haven't seen my couples game that I like to do, check out the video up above. It is members only, but it's worth a watch. Also, you can have in-home sessions with your couples, which I absolutely love. This is a great way to get them to do something that they like doing together, like a hobby, playing games, or something of that sort. Like I've had a couple once who they made pizza together and had drinks or eating pizza, just hanging around the house, playing a card game. Really, it sets the mood for your shots and it helps give you something to really storytell about. And last but not least is make sure you're focusing on A-roll and B-roll shots. Now, I talked about this earlier with having the two cameras with the different prime lenses on them, but basically what's happening is your A-roll shots are your main shots that really tell the story. Full body pictures gives you context to where the couple is and what is happening. And your B-roll shots are your close-ups. So if you have an engagement session and maybe the groom is going down on the knee, then you could do a close-up of the ring, you could do a close-up of the hands, then you could do a wider shot of where they are and her reaction. There's a lot of different things you can do like that to really set your A-roll and B-roll. And if you're not familiar with those terms, that's a very videographer style of thinking. A-roll is what I'm doing now. B-roll is if I show you anything else on the screen while you don't see my face talking about context of what I'm talking about. Taking that approach to your engagement sessions makes a huge difference, so let's actually see it in practice. Or maybe let's act like one of them is um almost like a vowel book, like he's reading you poetry or something. Yeah. Yeah, so let's let's get y'all in there. And then I already forgot your names. Susan and Garrett. Susan and Gary. Come up just a bit more so we're getting a little bit of light on you. That works. Yeah, and so let's put down the bigger book. Let's act like the smaller one's like, he's reading you, yeah. Yeah, and exactly, y'all just act like giddy and cute. Actually, both of y'all take a step to the... Step two, yeah. Not too much, just the right there. Yep, there, there you go, yep. Very 
So generally after I pose my couple and give them something to do, this is where I'm switching between my wider lenses to give context and also my closer lenses to get up close details. Again, this is one of the best ways to achieve storytelling through your photos. Also, this was at a styled shoot that I was recently at, and this is a real couple, which made it much easier to pose them as well. And even though this is a styled shoot, and you may be thinking that's the reason I got these great shots, it's actually just as easy to do this at a real engagement session. Just remember to have great rapport with your couple, as well as switching often between your A-roll and B-roll shots basically switching between your wider lenses and your tighter lenses. And then let's go ahead and um, drop the knee. So let's, I'll take both those books. I think there's enough, there should be enough space, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that works. And it give us like a gasp, like hands on your mouth, like, yeah. One thing you'll notice about these photos is I actually use the new Photoshop Beta AI to fill in the left side of the photo. Honestly, this is probably one of the easiest ways to get rid of things in photos that you may not need, like the extension cable down at the bottom or the lake over at the side. It just really didn't fit in with the photo, so I went ahead and got rid of it. If you wanna see a video on AI generative fill, please let me know in the comments below. Yep, extra animated is perfect for photos too. Kneel down like that and kiss him. Also remember that giving direction is highly important. Now, since this is a styled shoot, I'm giving a little bit more direction on what they should be doing. But if it were just a real couple in a real engagement session, I would give just a little bit less direction unless something didn't work out well, like hand placement, how they're standing, if their head was tilted weird. Those are the kind of things you'll want to point out in a nice way that doesn't make them feel self-conscious about the photos. Stay, stay where you are. I'm gonna get one close real quick. I'm just gonna get the ring. As far as editing is concerned as well, generally my close-up shots are gonna be the ones that end up being black and white. I get this question often, how do you know if a photo is black and white? And one of the biggest factors is if it's a B-roll shot. B-roll shots tend to be black and white and just look much better as black and whites. And then wider shots as black and white really depend on the lighting and the contrast. want to do one of my patented creeper shots as my wife calls it a creeper shot it's like with well, the bushes yeah that's see <laughs> so you get it. my wife's like why do you always shoot through the tree it looks like you're like well you know, secret engagement i didn't know um it's hard because there's not a space that y'all can really get in it however um so y'all yeah so stay where you are here i don't that slope is kind of steep i don't want you i'm good um y'all are bright see Y'all are the couples I love working with. I'm like, well, maybe if you want to do something crazy. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think it should be fine here. If y'all chest the chest. Yeah. But you're going to need to get like as close as possible and then turn so that you're facing me. So kind of how y'all work. Cool. Let's get this one shot in and then come like, like almost inside of it. If it's too much, again, just yeah, in the bush. Okay, I think I can. Can I? Um. No, I just don't want to mess up the tree either. Yeah, it's a little. It's tighter than. Actually, yeah, that is the spot. So, take it and turn it. Yep, and then come through a little bit. And now I'm just gonna become one with the bugs. Y'all take a step back and um, sit. Sarah, Sarah? Susan, Susan. oh my God. <laughs> take one step back in Susan's direction. So her back, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. This is what we came from. <laughs> 
This is what we wanted, makeout session. This is one of my absolute favorite shots and I absolutely love shooting through the bushes. If you've never taken a creeper shot, make sure to try one out and also check out my 10 favorite poses to help you get ideas for poses. Engagement sessions are a great place to start if you're looking to get into weddings. You have time, you can practice your poses, you can practice being with your couples. And if you wanna see a full real engagement session, check out this video here.